Eco Money on Money FM 89.3. Turning up your air conditioning to 25 degrees Celsius may seem like a small task, but it was a big ask at the inaugural WWF Earth Hour Summit. 500 CEOs, thought leaders, and decision makers from private and public sectors gathered at the summit, and each of them were tasked to pledge to make the switch. A symbolic shift that signifies a bigger mindset change needed by the industry. Speaking at the session, Ms. Grace Fu, Singapore Minister for Sustainability and the Environment, shared that the summit comes at a critical time as we're already seeing the effects of climate change and its devastating impact. To keep the goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees alive, Deep reductions in emissions must be made, not in the future, but in this decade. This is a mammoth of a challenge, one that requires collective action and collaboration. We must change our mindsets and behaviours, actively decarbonize, and pursue technologies and innovations to accelerate the green transition. Minister added that businesses can play an important role when it comes to decarbonisation, innovation, collaboration and not forgetting the role of financial institutions. I'll give you an example. McKinsey estimates that the world would require 9.2 trillion US dollars of investment per year on low emissions assets and infrastructure to meet the net zero 2050 goal. Currently, only 5.7 trillion US dollars is being invested per year. For banks such as DBS, Tan Su Shan, who is the group head of institutional banking, shared that the road to net zero isn't without its challenges. The first was data. I talked about how hard it was. When you sit down and start charting your clients' CO2 emissions, that's when the hard work begins. And every industry had different sources of, of tracking it. Real estate, you've got like in Singapore, the BCA Green Mark, uh, Platinum Gold Standard. Hong Kong has uh, LEED or CCRE or different measurements for pretty much the same asset. So that was a challenge, because every country and every industry, and even within the same industry like food and agri, you have different kinds of data pool and different measurements. That causes complexities that we need to solve collectively. And I, I think as a matter of time, when you look at the tech companies, you know, you, you evolve now to just Android and, and, and iOS. <laughs> Hopefully, the, the ESG world will also evolve when we end up with common standards. I'm seeing it today, it's not there yet. So the data pool is difficult. Another challenge that the industry and the corporate sustainability movement is facing is greenwashing. That's the act of a company overstating its environmental commitment or actions. R. Raghunathan, the CEO of WWF Singapore, says that in the longer term, though, greenwashing is not a concern and will take care of itself. I think greenwashing is an incidental issue mm. as everyone makes their progress towards going green. Maybe at the outset when the science is not fully developed or there are not enough companies or organizations or even the government moving towards net zero, well, you can get by with greenwashing. But as things become more transparent and as data becomes more commonly available, soon you will find analysts really examining uh, the sustainability claims being made by different organizations. And once that comparison happens, there will be people who will be doing extremely well. There will be people who will have said they have done well, but they will get caught up and then that will come to light. So life will continue. So greenwashing is not something that we really need to worry about too much right now. Mm -hmm. I think it is more to create awareness for the broader society and get them on the path towards net zero. The greenwashing will take care of itself as standards and you know policies become more developed and more entrenched. Uh, these issues should come down over time. Support from the government, though, is critical to help businesses move in the right direction. Minister Grace Fu highlighted, for example, that Singapore has implemented a carbon tax to provide a strong price signal and impetus for businesses to act. We will be progressively raising our carbon tax from the current $5 per tonne with a view of reaching $50 to $80 per tonne by 2030. Through this, we aim to right price our emissions and drive individuals and businesses to accelerate their transition. The revenue from the carbon tax will be used to support decarbonisation efforts 
through grants and incentives to help companies make the change. The public sector will lead the way through our Green Laughter SG initiative. We will peak our carbon emissions around 2025 and achieve net zero around 2045, ahead of the national targets. For WWF CEO R. Raghunathan, he says that the focus in the year ahead will be on programs that demonstrate impact. So WWF Singapore has a focus on four themes and nine programs, Mm -hmm. which we want to maintain over several years. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to demonstrate impact. And if I do programs, say, for year to year with change, then I'm not in a position to demonstrate anything tangible. It may look nice, but it may really not be impactful. Our focus in WWF Singapore is to demonstrate impact that is visible to everyone. And our four themes are uh, broad. They include climate, they include nature and biodiversity, circularity and sustainable uh, economy, and then programs that are closer to Singapore. So if we turn the clock back, a decade or more ago, WWF Singapore was seen as a peer conservation, education and fundraising organisation. It's since evolved to cover new verticals that address issues such as climate change, such as sustainable finance. Before I left the WWF Earth Hour Summit, I asked R. Raghunathan how he thinks the organisation will evolve in the coming decade. We will be there no matter if society progresses to the next level. Mm -hmm. Because our job is to be a catalyst and make sure that this planet remains green and is there for future generations. Mm -hmm. So our work will never finish. And we are very happy to be working in Singapore because so much strong support from different stakeholders really motivate us and empower us to continue our journey over the long term. That was WWF CEO R. Raghunathan speaking to me on the sidelines of the inaugural Earth Hour Summit. Earth Hour will take place later this month on the 25th of March at 8.30pm. I'm Rachel Kelly and you've been listening to Eco Money on Money FM 89.3.